Welcome to another video on Base Bellagio. This is my settings guide for Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. This will get your mid-range PC and low-end PC using this game to its full advantage without sacrificing too much graphic fidelity. I have a i7 9700KF that's overclocked and I have a 3070, an RTX 3070 with 32 gigabytes of RAM and the game is installed on an SSD. The things that are helping my older mid-range PC, now it's a little long in the tooth, but we're still getting above 60 frames per second. The game is looking good. The key factors here are a strong CPU. I overclock mine to 4900 gigahertz, all cores, all eight cores. And then I overclock my graphics card, the 3070, using MSI Afterburner. You would have to watch other videos on how to overclock your components. And my RAM is also an XMP profile overclocked. I think it's 3200 RAM speed. The overclocking will help because this game is super CPU intensive. But again, if your system is similar to mine, here are my settings that are keeping the game looking good and very smooth to run. We have texture quality on high. I only have eight gigabytes of VRAM. So if you have less than that, you wanna set this to medium or lower. Definitely don't go to Epic. Epic would be for more VRAM systems. Hair medium, object detail medium. Effects quality I have on high. You can drop this to medium if you need more FPS. Same with hair, you could drop that to low. It's not that important. You can get a little bit of FPS out of the hair. The object detail, I feel like you wanna keep on medium if you have a mid-range PC. Again, after this, I'll go over the low settings for lower end potato PCs. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You could still play this game and have fun with it with a lower end PC. Post-processing medium. Again, you can go low. I know people that play Tarkov, they have 4090s, they have brand new CPUs, and they all they care about is the FPS, the frames per second. And they drop all this to low. So do not be ashamed if you have to go low. But again, post-processing can be on low if you need the extra oomph. Next, we have anti-aliasing on medium for, for my rig. Motion blur, 0%. I don't like motion blur at all. Depth of field medium, light shafts enabled, and sharpness 20%. Seems to be working good on my system. Next, I am using DLSS with the quality upscale. You can put this on balanced or performance. I feel like performance looks really bad. I would only go down to balanced if needed, okay? But quality seems to be working. It's not reducing the scale too much. Frame gen I have off. You can use this, but it does add input latency. Not quite noticeable on mouse and keyboard, but I like to stream my computer using sunshine and moonlight. That's a whole different topic, but I stream my computer over my network to my upstairs living room and I play a little couch gaming. And if I used frame generation, it would really add a lot of input latency. Whereas without it, it works very well without it. But again, if you need those frames, this is what you would do. Shading quality medium, global illumination medium, reflections medium, shadow quality medium. All the way down from here on out, the things you wanna put on low, everything under environment you could drop to low to gain extra FPS, especially on lower end systems. These are not that important and the game looks decent with these on low. It doesn't look that bad. Shadow quality you'd wanna to drop to low on a lower end system. That would help you gain a lot of FPS back. Reflections, you could do low, it won't look that bad. Global illumination, I'd wanna keep to medium, but again, lower end system, drop this to low. It's not gonna hurt anybody, and you should not be embarrassed. Like I said, people that are first person shooter fanatics are playing this game on low anyway. They just want the frames. 
shading quality go to low on a lower end PC. And then on the display side, we have full screen exclusive. That seems to be helping people. Um, field of view, the higher you go with this, the more intensive you're gonna need because uh, it's showing more of the screen. Put it, think about that. I would keep it between 80 and 90 on a lower end rig uh, or keep it to your preference, obviously. But if you wanna squeeze out some more frames, you wanna lower this without making it look too weird. V-Sync disabled. This will just add some nuttiness to your game on a low end rig. Uh, don't do it. Do no limits on your frame rate. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Disabled, that's how I have it. Your image encoding you want to keep on sRGB LDR. This is better than the other option. Uh, this is the difference between lights and darks. Uh, if you have it on the other option, it looks a little too muddled. Too dark uh, in areas and you can't really see detail. Now preference wise, we have object highlighting disabled. We got rid of the yellow paint. That's not gonna help your frames at all, just a preference. And also I have the voiceover language in English. It is definitely more true to the Stalker series to be in Russian, Ukrainian. Um, the sounds better, but I noticed while I'm playing, I don't wanna be reading subtitles of everything. So just a personal preference that I have the subtitles on still, but I like being able to listen to the voiceover in English, it definitely is more jank, almost like Oblivion or Skyrim, you know, voices. But I like it, it's okay. That's a personal preference. Now, with these settings, the ones I showed you that I'm using, I am getting above 60 frames per second with minimal stuttering, minimal frame dropping. The game is running really well, really well. You could definitely sacrifice some areas if you need more frames. But for this system that I have, 9700 KF, 3070, this is working good. And it's only uphill from here. The developers are going to optimize this game. Like every game released in this decade, it is getting worse and worse. The developers just put out broken games and optimize later. It's very common. Look at Cyberpunk. Now that game is running super smooth and crisp for everybody. It took them quite a while to fix it. It was definitely broken on release. I wouldn't say Stalker is broken too much graphically on release. It could definitely be better, but the AI is completely broken and they are working on a fix. If these settings helped you out, definitely leave a thumbs up. Comment down below what settings you're using, what kind of system specs you have, and let me know if this helped. Thank you for watching and hit a thumbs up again to help the channel out. Catch you on the next one.